I'm Dr. Farzan Bahim from Westmead Hospital in Sydney, Australia. I'm presenting the paper entitled Efficacy of Viscous Budesonide Slurry for the Prevention of Post-Endoscopic Resection Stricture of Early Barrett's Neoplasia. And my co-authors are Drs. Jayana, Dr. Williams, Dr. Lee, and the senior author, Professor Michael Burke. Um, endoscopic resection of uh, early Barrett's neoplasia with high-grade dysplasia and or early esophageal adenocarcinoma has uh, become the primary way of treating these entities rather than the traditional treatment which consisted of esophagectomy. Um, endoscopic resection is the most accurate T-staging method and informs the risk of uh, lymphovascular invasive risk. One of the main limitations of endoscopic resection is the formation of stricture or stenosis uh, which can significantly impair patients' quality of life and nutritional status. Stricture formation also adds to the endoscopic and therefore risk burden uh, to the patient. Stricture formation is proportional to the surface area resected and occurs at a frequency of 10 to 80 percent in reported series, with a realistic figure occurring in approximately 30 to 40 percent of cases, which is quite significant. Thus, a therapy which is simple to use, cost effective, and safe. Um, is required to overcome this limitation of endoscopic resection. It's believed that um, extensive resection results in a large area of ulceration and causes activation of the inflammatory cascade which then promotes a fibrostenotic reaction and leads to stricture formation. This process is similar in another disease entity uh, which is eosinophilic esophagitis which goes from an initial inflammatory phenotype to a fibrostenotic phenotype. Our hypothesis was that since budesonide is quite effective in disease and histological control of eosinophilic esophagitis it may have a role in prevention of stricture formation following endoscopic resection. Systemic corticosteroids, budesonide is a topical form and therefore uh, limits systemic absorption and maximizes topical adherence. In addition, it avoids some of the risks of injecting steroids directly into a raw wound. The other advantage is that it's easy to use, very available, and also cost-effective compared to some alternative therapies which have uh, as yet limited proof of efficacy. These include prophylactic stent placement, use of biological sheets and prophylactic dilatation regimens. Thus our study consisted of an open label design whereby we invited patients undergoing complete endoscopic resection of Barrett's with either high-grade dysplasia or early adenocarcinoma to use viscous budesonide, make it up as a slurry and use a dose of 2 milligrams twice a day for 6 weeks uh, following endoscopic therapy in addition to standard high-dose PPI therapy. We compared the results of our intervention to a historical control um, which uh, involved uh, identical endoscopic treatment, high dose PPI therapy, but no other prophylactic intervention. Our results show that compared to historical controls, there was a significant reduction in the rate of in, uh, stricture formation, and our surrogate marker for that was the need for dilatation. The rate of dilatation in the viscous budesonide group, which was a group of 29 patients, was 14%. Uh, and this compares to the historical controls of 75 patients at a rate of 37%. In addition, the dysphagia score uh, 
uh, was significantly different between the two groups being zero or no dysphagia in the intervention group compared to one in the historical control. In regards to the other patient characteristics, outcomes and adverse events, there were no significant differences between the two groups. Uh, apart from two patients who were non-compliant with treatment due to taste disturbance and nausea, all other patients uh, tolerated the treatment and were adherent based on self-based reporting. Our study points towards uh, proof of concept that using uh, viscous budesonide slurry, which is a topical form, which is easy to use, uh, it has significant potential to reduce the rates of stricture formation and compared to alternative therapies it appears to be minimally invasive and cost effective. Obviously it's a limited study with small patient numbers and it's a, uh, got historical controls which have inherent limitations and biases included with it. It would be very important to validate these findings through a randomized control study to see whether viscous budesonide slurry truly has a role in the prevention of post-endoscopic resection stricture formation.